students today we are going to start understanding separation theorems proving them and discussing them so what are separation theorems separation theorems are unique to convex sets so if you take two convex sets which are non empty and they don't intersect each other then i can always have an hyperplane which separates these two means the one of the convex sets is in the upper half space and the other is in the lower half space both of them cannot be in the same half space because we know a hyperplane will create two half spaces now in our discussion today we are going to do only two results first so that you understand the things carefully because this is something every student of economics should understand very very carefully so now uh, what happens is that we are going to first take the most simplest case we will take c to be a closed convex set in rn and zero is a point which lies outside c so we are going to show the existence of a hyperplane where zero is strictly in the lower half space and the set c is strictly in the upper half space means in the interior of the upper half space it is not even touching the hyperplane none of these neither zero nor uh, the elements of set c touch the hyperplane but it doesn't so they are strictly inside the lower and upper half spaces respectively so what does it say is that if you have such a situation then there must be a p which is non zero and there must be an alpha which is greater than 0 such that this equation holds so if i consider means what is happening is that i can show the existence of a hyperplane h which is given as a set of collection of all x in rn such that the inner product between p and x is equal to alpha for such a hyperplane the set c lies strictly inside the upper half space and the point 0 lies strictly in the lower half space so that's exactly what this statement means that zero is greater than alpha alpha is strictly lesser than px for all x in c so we take the idea of the proof from a book called game theory alive by carlin and perez because the proof is very simply done so first of all we would understand that a zero is outside the set and and c is a closed convex set so there is a unique projection p of zero on c obviously p is not equal to 0 now once we do that we take any x in c and with p i make a convex combination okay. so basically what mane it's, it's a scenario like this which this one so here is was 0 i drop here it just p and then with some x here i make the take any convex combination i take any point lying here okay you know that in this case the projection problem is nothing but solving minus uh, sorry solving the problem uh, minimizing norm of z square over all z belonging to c so means since p minimizes such a function uh, such that square norm function the norm p square must be less than this where lambda is chosen strictly between 0 and 1 right so when that happens then i can expand it in this form using the known laws of inner product rules of inner product and once i do that then i open up this square 1 minus lambda square which will give me 1 minus 2 lambda into minus lambda square so one p square would cancel with this p square and minus 2 lambda p square will go this on the left hand side give remaining this thing is here now if i divide all the sides by lambda and pass to the limit as lambda tends to 0 then what i will get is this because 2 and 2 will cancel off here and this this parts will go to 0 while here 1 minus lambda will go to 1 because lambda is already taken off when you divide so since now p is not equal to 0 obviously p is on the set c the result can be proved simply by assuming that alpha is half of norm p square which is strictly bigger than 0 so 0 is strictly less than alpha which is half norm p square which is again strictly less than sorry uh, not 2p square just norm p square less than equal to px please forgive me for this 2 this is not 2 here it is just just p square less than equal to 
px which you which you know from this equation so basically half of half of this thing is strictly less than this hmm. right so if i take that at alpha that alpha is strictly bigger than zero but strictly less than this px for every x so it doesn't matter what x that you have chosen in c because the c the x was chosen arbitrarily it doesn't the theorem is proved so this half norm p square is your alpha that is so px equal to half norm p square is the hyperplane equation that is the set of all x's such that inner product between p and x should exactly equal to half norm p square hmm. right so that that kind of uh, hyperplane actually strictly separates these two points zero the set and the point that is exactly this is when when we have all these inequalities strict we call a strict separation has occurred now let us consider the scenario of not just a singleton set and a, another set which is non singleton possibly but two sets which are not singleton so i have two sets one is c1 which is a non empty closed convex set and c2 a non empty convex but compact set that is it is both closed and bounded then i can again show that c1 and c2 lies in two different half spaces that c1 lies in the upper half space and c2 lies in the lower half space but strictly inside the upper half space and strictly inside the lower half space means a strict separation is possible that i can show the existence of a p not equal to 0 and a beta element of r such that this equation that inner product between p and z for every z in c2 must be strictly less than beta and beta must be strictly less than px so i am looking at the hyperplane set of all x such that px is equal to or py equal to beta i am looking at that hyperplane so any x any element of c2 hmm, is lying in the lower half space any element of c1 is lying in the upper half space so how do i do that just let me have a look so how do i do that so instead of considering the so what what we have only now knowledge about the set c and the point zero outside it now consider the set c1 minus c2 the difference of two convex set the minkowski difference that there is a, it consists of all elements z which can be written as x minus y vectorial difference where x and y are elements of c1 and c2 respectively now zero cannot be an element of c1 minus c2 because if zero is element of c1 and c2 there is element of c1 and an element of c2 such that zero is equal to the difference of those two elements So which means those two elements must be same, and which means they both belong to C1 as well as C2, and hence C1 intersection C2 would be non-empty. Which is uh, though we have not mentioned here, but uh, that is what we are uh, aiming at. That C1 and C2 has to have a non-empty, has to have an empty intersection. So when we are talking about uh, these kinds of uh, sets. Uh, i should i think i should have written here that c1 intersection c2 is empty so we obviously without that this result on hold so we are all, always talking about two non intersecting convex set so here we are talking about two non intersecting convex set one is closed and one is compact so c1 is closed c2 is compact so z, so now we have constructed out of these two sets the minkowski difference between these two sets which is a convex set and we have shown that zero is not there so we can apply the previous result to show that there must be an alpha for which this happens where x is element of c1 and z is element of c2 there must be a p non zero for which this happens so once you do this what you have you can write that for any x you choose and any z in c2 and any x in c1 this is always a correct correct thing this this inequality holds now c2 is compact and the function z to pz is continuous and is because it's a linear function so by compactness by weierstrass theorem there must be an x star at which the 
supremum amount, the maximum value is achieved because the function is bounded. That is the Weierstrass theorem. So we don't write it here. So, so I should write it when I possibly do up the notes that there exists uh, Z star in C2 such that this happens by the grace of Weierstrass theorem. Now once this happens, now this Z star is a particular Z star in C2, right? So for, for that particular Z star, this is true. So alpha of, because of this inequality that we have got by using the previous theorem, we have that alpha plus Pz star is strictly less than Px because this is true for every Z in C2. I am now choosing a particular Z which is Z star. So what is happening? that p of z star is strictly less than alpha plus p of z p in our product z star. When I say p, z, p of z star means p in our product z star and this is strictly less than px because here alpha is strictly bigger than 0 then you if you add a positive quantity to some number it strictly increases. So now if I choose beta to be equal to alpha plus p z star then we get back what we had actually claimed. So now, this is the idea of strict separation. You can look at the problem as we go that we am just trying to say that, okay, if I don't have zero outside set C, but some X outside set C, can you write a separation theorem? So what you can, you have to remodify the first theorem that you learned into the case where outside we don't have zero, but we have some X. So again, you have to convert it into the first problem in the form of zero element of C minus X, zero not element of C minus X. So, so please note that this in this result we have to con also write C1 intersection C2 is empty which is that they don't intersect and but is that is what we have to mean. I think I should I'd be writing I should have been written that these are non-intersecting sets but okay I just forgotten to write it but so it's a mistake and I'm so good at making typos I'm getting old I guess that's that's the whole thing. So uh, anyway so we have got this theorem so if I consider now the hyperplane given by the set of all x's such that p of x is equal to beta, then what I have done simply tells that this hyperplane strictly separates c1 and c2. c1 is in, lying inside the upper half space, c2 is lying inside the lower half space. So let us visualize what is the meaning of strict separation. That is here is x, for example, there is x outside c. And you can draw a hyperplane where x is completely inside the upper half space and c is completely inside the lower half space. Now, you can say, okay, I can also draw two non-convex sets and show that they have this strict separation. Yeah, but there are certain non-convex sets you will very soon see in the nodes for which you can have no strict separation. You can have no hyperplane which will not even strictly separate them, not even separate them. See what would happen if there is a situation, so if the set C, this king touches the hyperplane, then also there is no problem. Then also we can say we have a separation. But what we can show that in this set of situation, we can actually have a strict separation, which is very, very important. That you can actually have a strict separation. Uh, so we will go to the case gradually that what would happen if we do not have a strict separation in the sense when I wonder what situations we do not hear the C is closed and point is outside you can see strict separation C1 is closed C2 is compact you will see strict separation C is closed and 0 is outside is strict separation if now among the sets C1 and C2 one of them is not closed one of them is open open convex set what would be the answer but they don't intersect what would be the answer so that answer we will see tomorrow's uh, lecture so, okay, let's me just uh, call it uh, end of this discussion and tomorrow we'll see more discuss, we'll discuss what is called the, um, the supporting hyperplane theorem and, and after that we will go and study the famous ideal hertz separation theorem which says, okay, what happens if one of the two sets is open because here, what we have seen is that the convex sets are all the convex sets are necessarily closed 
one is open one is closed because somewhere deeply we are using the projection idea so even if you have a point x outside you will use a projection on the set c the projection idea is very very fundamental which actually would generate the hyperplane is the projection so the hyperplane in some sense is given by a vector which is perpendicular to the projection to the vector of the uh, the hyperplane is perpendicular to the projection vector or the perpendicular vector so what i want to emphasize is that in our next lecture we will come to the situation where we will talk about supporting hyperplane theorems and also we will talk about a situation when if one of the set c is open what we will do open convex set and a closed convex set and there is no intersection between them what will we do that would be our question and that would we will answer in the next class thank you very much